back to why in the morning the hashtag is hashtag entrepreneurship tuesday at y254 channel is where you can find us across all social media handles at michelle ashira is where you can reach out to me on all my social in this particular session you're looking at an out outdoor recreational venture and uh, most importantly for right now it's a non-profit organization but we we'll look at uh, ways uh, my guest says uh, is going to make uh, um, generate income out of this so it's a conversation that you want to stick around my guest is David Mulo from Green Kenya a sport for development uh, organization that has different program from sport for the sport for development development we have environmental program and also uh, i believe girl and boy child empowerment it's a conversation you want to stick around uh stick around for stick around for so with no further ado let's just dive into this so david mulo thank you very much for creating time to be with us you're welcome all right starting starting us off i'm very curious uh, to uh, why did you start a non-profit organization? And uh, before that, tell us what Green Kenya is all about. Well, uh, just the way you've mentioned, thank you for having me. Uh, okay. So Green Kenya is a sport for development organization. Mm -hmm. So we teach through sports. Um, <clears throat> just like teachers use, you know, chalk, uh, we use football to mentor and work with children mm -hmm. um, in informal settlements. Yeah. All right. Why Sports Centre? Uh, because um, I grew up playing football. I started playing football at the age of uh, eight, nine there. And um, I know what football can do in someone's life. Uh, I remember when I was going to the field, I would feel, you know, different uh, being in the field. And as I was growing up, I decided this is what I want to do. <clears throat> but I did, not, I did not have a clear picture of, of how I'm going to do it. But I knew that with this football, I can do something so um <clears throat> and and i grew up where people liked football so we would go and play football and even forget food uh during lunchtime and i would come back in the evening and my dad would be like where were you mm -hmm. and based on you know how i was looking it was like he's from football and also my dad liked football so i think i got this from him and uh that's how this passion you know came in and the conviction that this is possible mm -hmm. What is interesting about uh, this organization that you've started is that it focuses on life skills, which is mm -hmm. so essential uh, when it comes to teaching young children, y the, young, the young ones in the society, because mm -hmm. they go to school, the, you know, the formal education, and then the life hits and life situations, and they don't, they don't know how to deal with that. Why did you choose on life skills? Um. <coughs> The reason why I decided this is because uh, of my upbringing. Um, I saw, I lost some of my friends in, in mysterious ways. And um, I decided that if, if my fellow players and my community like football, then we'll use this to bring change, to bring transformation. And you know, when you play football and, and you're good at it, people tend to f you know, follow you, you tend to have you know, uh, friends around you, they want to be like you. And in our community, we were at that, at that level. So I decided that I'm going to use this football to transform the lives of young people so that they don't see or face what I faced or, or you know, the, the, the challenges that we faced when we were growing up. And that's how the passion to use football came in. Um, I remember in high school, I had friends uh, who would, you know, challenge me and, and say, come. Just, just come and pick the cones, come do attendance register. And that's how I developed, you know, the, the passion to do this. And before I knew it, I met people who, you know, nurtured my, my, my vision. And one day I just said, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. This up. And I remember um, I, I was sitting with one of my friends, uh, it's called O.T. Charles. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, why don't you, you know, call this Green Kenya? And I was like, why not? So. We went to do the search and we found that there were so many green Kenya. So we said, let's put green, a hyphen between Kenya and green. Mm -hmm. And that's how green Kenya came up. So uh, when I was starting, I did not have any clue that it would be like what it is today. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we did the constitution. We said, okay, we don't have a platform where we can, you know, show people what we can do. We created the website and that's how we developed 
uh, the organization. So I did not, I did, I was not aware that um, we were creating a business in one way or the other because in the long run we're like, but this is a business because this, we didn't have the structure. Oh, yeah. We have the structure now. We didn't have a team. We have a team now. We didn't have like a school that will go do this program. Now we have it. So it's more of a business, you know. Yeah. I think that comes out clear is that you followed your passion to the point where you actually didn't, didn't uh, identify that it was actually a business. So how important is it for someone who is watching this and probably have this particular interest? So mm -hmm. how can they convert that into a business idea? Well, uh, <coughs> first of all, what I would say is you need to have the conviction. You need to believe that this can be possible. Um, many a times we tend to believe what other people are saying uh, for us. But once you believe that this is possible, then you follow your passion. When you're starting, you'll not be clear. I just want to be you know, honest with this. You'll not know exactly where you're going, but as you follow your passion, it will open up doors. Mm -hmm. um, number two is what makes you feel like, what makes you turned on? That's what I experienced. I felt like when I play football, I will feel good. I will feel that supernatural good. And that's how this vision came up. So if you're at home and you have something that you believe this is it, you believe it. You believe on it. And then start, this is how I, I did it. Mm -hmm. So start writing the things that you, you want in that business or in that organization. Okay. So for example is, how many children do you want to work with? Where do you want to work? Uh, where do you want the business or the organization to be? Uh, who do you want to work with? Who do you want to be in your team? How big do you see this business or, or organization? Mm -hmm. And believe you me, if you start doing it like that, you, you're breaking the, the, the dream or the vision into segments, it will happen. Right. You just break, them, you break it down in, in small portions. Yes. Okay. So, for example, I remember when we were starting, um, we didn't have even, I, I, have one, I had one ball. Okay. And uh, we didn't have, like, the team. And I, I wrote the, the names of the people that I wanted to work mm -hmm. with and their qualities. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what came up. So I remember when we were doing our trainings, I, I told them that, guys, I don't have all the expertise, but mm -hmm. what I know is that if we stick together, where two or three are gathered, something will happen. You had the vision. Oh, yeah. All right, so... Uh, Sorry for cutting you short. It's okay. Uh, so how did you start and what, what were the gears and tools did you have? Because you mentioned you had one ball. How mm -hmm. did you gather around to, uh, to get other resources and how many students did you start, start off with? Very good. So <coughs> we had, uh, you know, some people believed in us and, and this is what I believe. It has, it has become one of my motivating factors that sometimes you have to believe in other people's belief before your belief kicks in. So I had friends like uh, from coaches across continent uh, who you know, were able to, to train me. But before coaches across continent, I was able to volunteer with other organizations like Vijana Mani Pomoja uh, in, in Italy. And uh, through that, I was able to you know, have some knowledge and idea of, of doing this. And then I met CAC, uh, coaches across continent, whereby I was able to meet with their founder in those early, early years. And uh, he told me one thing. He said, David, you have something in you, and I would like you to follow it up. So he said, as coaches across continent, we'll help you to do monitoring and evaluation, to have webinars and virtual uh, meetings whereby you can develop your skill. And then after that, they gave me opportunities to go and work in other communities. So I've been able to, to work in like six uh, counties in Kenya. Uh, we've been in Marsabit. I've done uh, volunteer work in Bita, in Kisumu, in Mogotio, um, just to mention a few. And through that, I was able to get the knowledge that I wanted. So the vision was in me, but CAC, you know, gave me like the skill that I needed to do this work. Mm -hmm. And then with the resources, I remember the first two years, it was, was very difficult. We had nothing. I remember I would walk from school A to school B and I'll tell, I'll tell them that I'll be there in the next 30 minutes and I'll be late because I was walking. So towards three years down the line, um, we were able to meet with the um, Pollination Project and uh, the Pollination Project is, is, an, is also a non-profit organization that gathers you know, resources and, and uh, impacts the life of young people who are doing extraordinary things. 
and uh, they were able to support us uh, the thousand okay. dollars <coughs> that's like a hundred thousand mm -hmm. and I remember I remember the feeling up to date you know um, I was able to get the balls uh, the equipment that we needed and I would go to the school at the exact time that feeling I was not earning anything but that conviction that feeling that it is possible that kept me going uh, all along so I remember the first seed grant that was like a game changer mm, okay. i just wanted to meet this person who was able to see my vision um from from far and and just support it and up to date i feel still i feel emotional every time i think of that one moment because through that we we're able to get you know other opportunities mm. and other interviews and other people wanted to work with us and we ended up working with the first um time i worked with around 50 children 50. 50. And um, I went to a school in Shaurimoyo. This is back in 20? Mm, 2017. 2017, okay. And um, I remember I went to one school. We still work with that school. It's called um, Splash Community okay. School in Shaurimoyo. And uh, I remember that the head teacher then told me that, David, I will give you only 20 minutes because if you waste the time of my children, you'll never mm -hmm. come back here. I was like, that is what I wanted. You have the opportunity. That is what I wanted. And and since 2017, mm -hmm. we've we, we worked with the school. Uh, we had 50. He added up another uh, 20. And so the, the, the children were many. Point. I was alone. So I had to look for other people. Mm -hmm. And that's how we were able to bring other people into the team. So at this moment, we're like um, 10, oh. 10 volunteers okay. who are working to this project. This, they, they, they cannot you know, commit their time fully because they have to go and work. Absolutely. But for me, I'm there. Full time. Come rain, come sunshine. Okay. I will be there. All right. Speaking about being there full time, how, how do you sustain yourself mm -hmm. uh, considering like uh, it, it, you have not yet got a mm -hmm. structure, business structure on how you can generate income yet? And what's the plan? So, <coughs> you know, one of the things that uh, Pollination told us or asked was, how are you going to be sustainable? How are you going to ensure that, okay, you generate income in, in, in this? And um, we, we, we've also been doing uh, fundraising on, online uh, through uh, Global Giving, where people who uh, mm -hmm. see or who want to donate to your project can uh, donate. So that's how we've been keeping ourselves sustainable. Sometimes it comes, sometimes, you know, it takes time. But um, the pollination asked, how are you guys going to be sustainable? And we had to think some of the ways that are going to be sustainable. So we've put um, other programs that helps us to generate funds or, or some money to help us going. So for example, and this is another program that, that came in. That's why I told you mm -hmm. that I didn't know that I was, you know, doing a business per se. Oh, yes. So we have another program called Kick and Conserve. So it, during Kick and Conserve, we bring around 10 schools. That's about 450 to 500 participants in one institution, in one big school, mm -hmm. where they learn about environmental games, they play football, and then later they plant a tree. Mm -hmm. So through that, schools are able to pay, and it, that helps us to run uh, the organization. We're able to buy trophies, and we can you know, pay transport and, and stipend for other volunteers. Um, so, okay. um, so through uh, Kick and Conserve, we've been able to you know, generate funds, but also help children have fun and also conserve the environment. Oh, you know? yes. and, and because um, in schools in Nairobi, they're not that huge, so we choose the captains to plant uh, a tree, but our vision is to have you know, all these children at least plant three or four trees in their primary life. Can you imagine if you have 500 children, let's say, let's take the list, 400 children okay. in one activity, mm -hmm. they, and, and they're able to plant 400 trees. And we normally have three kick and conserve in a year. So that would be like, you know, 1,200 seedlings in a year. Mm -hmm. And we've only worked with class four and above. How about if you involve, you know, children who are in the lower primary? Mm -hmm we'll be able to you know, cover or plant enough trees mm. with, this, with these children, okay? So that's how we've been able to raise 
to you generate also income. Fund. And I also like the fact that it's, it's also an opportunity to also uh, include the underprivileged, the oh children yeah. who are underprivileged. So I'd like to find out how important, for someone who's watching this conversation, how important is it when it comes to networking? And how do you actually uh, maintain those relationships? Because you're speaking about uh, people who actually haven't met, who support mm -hmm. this vision uh, from uh, different uh, continent and country so how is it important to maintain and how do you actually maintain uh, this relationship when it comes to networking very good so networking is very important you cannot do this work alone and once you have a vision uh, as time goes by it gets you know it gets bigger and now you cannot hold it alone you need other people that's why networking is very very important and um, the way we've been able to nurture this network is you know just get out there and share with people what you're doing. And if you have like-minded organizations like, you know, the Polynesian or Coats Across Continent, then you're able to exchange ideas. And so <coughs> another thing is um, talk to people about what you're doing because you can imagine there are people who are having great ideas out here, but they are not ready to share with other people or they don't know how to bring it out. So you also need to be able to communicate your ideas and your thoughts clearly, okay? okay. Um, something else is, is actually be believe in what you're saying because mm -hmm. you might be saying something else but your heart is saying something, you'll not be able to get it right. So when it comes to networking, just, just go, go on to this event, just sit there and learn. Okay. Um, I will say that um, I don't know if it is the universe or, or the, the way I am, but I was able to, you know, follow these links and my vision or my plan was not to get money in the beginning, it was to learn, get the idea. Through that, you're able to connect and learn from other people who are doing the same. And then I thought that, you know, um, if you have... If you have more money, you can have a good plan. But I came to realize that, that I, I, thought, <laughs> I thought that, you know, if you have more money, you'll have good plans. Oh, but, okay. but I came to realize oh. that if you have a good plan, money will, follow. money will follow. But you have to show mm -hmm. what you want to become and what is possible within you before that uh, money can follow. And if you learn that way, then you'll be able to know that it is not about money per se. It is about the vision. Okay. You know, it is, it, is, it is very, very critical to understand this because at times we are so much into money and forget the bigger picture. We've worked with children who will never pay us, whom I will never maybe see again in other counties or in other countries. But that feeling makes people want to support the vision. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so what does it, uh, what's the age? target the, orga the organization mm -hmm. is aiming for? So um, organization is now divided into two tires. Okay. So we have 9 to 19 years, mm -hmm. both boys and girls. And then we have, you know, 20 years and above because <coughs> we also have another program. And I like talking uh, about this through programs because mm -hmm. that's how we were able to evolve and create this, this program. So uh, I've talked about two tires. So from 9 to... 19, yeah. these, these are young people, so they like you know, to have fun and play. So we have, you know, uh, programs that give them that opportunity. Mm -hmm. But when you come to the second tier where we have, you know, Green Kenya Sports for Social Impact Consultancy, where we work with other organizations, uh, this is where <coughs> we are able to, you know, charge a small percentage to be able to support the organization. I believe that I have experiences and expertise that I can share with other people. And can you imagine sharing what you love doing and then mm -hmm. people pay for it? Pay for it. I mean, that is, that is the fulfillment, working, actually. you know? Yes. Um, and and this, is, this is what I learned along the way, that your job is what you've been hired for, but your work is your, is your gift. Mm -hmm. You go and work for your skill. You're being paid for your skill, but your work is what you came with, you know? What you're doing right now was in you, mm -hmm. and you've you went to school to refine it. Can you imagine you're being paid for what you like doing? So our second tire is about uh, impacting other communities also, and to give them an opportunity to feel the way I'm feeling, mm -hmm. and have fun, play, but also, you know, uh, pay something small that 
can support the organization. All right. Yeah. Just to have a clear uh, end look of what the organization does when it comes to offering uh, life skills to these young young people. Uh, let's look at, for instance, if you're uh, intending to teach discipline, how does the how do you mm -hmm. go about it? Very good. I get to, you know I get these kind of questions most of the time. So. We do have a curriculum. We do, we do have a soccer team curriculum through um, our partners, CAC. And uh, <coughs> we've been able to localize it to suit our, our needs here. Mm -hmm. So we have a structured program where it has three parts. Mm -hmm. One is, we call it warm up, where we play with them, you know, just to involve them. We do some greetings and get to know how they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then the main part is now we're going to talk about uh, the challenge per se or the social issue for example, the discipline. So we can divide it into different segments. So is it self-discipline? Is it you know, respecting women? Is it um, respecting your environment or respecting your, your, your surrounding? And then we'll, we'll talk about maybe, for example, respecting women. Um, and we'll, we'll look at some of the social issues or things that makes people not to respect women. And then we start to question these uh, harmful practices. And you know, children are children, they will tell you, so through football, um, we ask them questions. We ask, um, we spark vital conversation through play. Mm -hmm. I wish I had a ball and, and, <laughs> and I could demonstrate it here. But through that, they're able to open up and they're, they're able to reflect and see, oh, so the way I was thinking is not the right way. Mm -hmm. The first uh, week is difficult, but as you work with them, as you become consistent, you see the change. So <clears throat> we did an example. So there was this girl uh, who was always violent. And the teacher said, uh, we're, we're not going to So we got curious. So we went there in the afternoon and we observed the girl. And later in the, in the, in the pitch, we asked her, what is the problem? Why are you always like this? And she looked down. And we started involving her in the sessions, giving her small tasks, calling the attendance register and we started seeing her transforming. Okay, so we later realized that it was the abuse that was taking place at home mm -hmm. that was making the child become violent. Mm -hmm. Now the teacher had ruled her out that we are not evil, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So, and this one does not come one or two uh, days. It takes time before you can, you can study a child. Through CSE, we're able to, you know, do trainings and, and uh, other programs that helps you know how to work with children. You know, so when it comes to discipline, it will go to child protection policy where why do they behave like this and what can you do to correct this? Oh, yes. You know, so we have a child protection policy games mm -hmm. and a child prote protection policy document that you're working on to build it and make it stronger mm -hmm. uh, so that, you know, we are able to protect children in our, in our program. That way you'll be able to look at the root cause of the problem, you know. Yes. Yeah, and uh, you brought up something very important about the whole situation, and you gave us a scenario of the girl and uh, the fact that she was experiencing abuse back at home. Are there is there an inclusive of uh, maybe a counselor when you dealing mm -hmm. with mental health when it comes to these young kids? Um, so <coughs> that's very very important. At the moment, um, like I said, we're working on our child protection policy, and it has to have that okay. uh, segment. You know, like I said. It is a non-profit, so sometimes you're not able to pay for this, mm -hmm. uh, to pay for, for a counselor. And so what we've decided is one of the volunteers, I think two, will go and study um, how to counsel children. It's called counseling psychology. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully next year, it was supposed to happen this year, but because of the situation, we'll not be able to, uh, that person won't be able to go to school. But next year, uh, we'll have two people who will do counseling psychology that will work with both male and female, oh. uh, because that's a, that's a profession, it's a skill that is, is needed. But in our child protection policy document, <coughs> we have a procedure of documenting this. You know, uh, if, it, if an abuse happens, what, do you, what do, should you do? Uh, where can you go and where can you refer them? So at the moment it's just referrals. Okay. When it comes to the other trainers that you work with, what is the process that you take in terms of just uh, getting the ideal trainer to mm -hmm. deal with these young people? So um, <coughs> I do most of the training. Mm -hmm. um, I train them on uh, how to work with children, 
Um, we do things like um, <coughs> physical literacy, a child-centered program in physical literacy. It's a program by itself. And um, through CSE as well, we also have you know, trainings that happen every year. We were supposed to have one in April this year, but did not take place because of, of, of COVID. So through this kind of trainings and exposure in other, other communities, they're able to uh, learn this skill. But we do have a stringent uh, process of getting volunteers because we, we want to have people who can um, be role models, mm -hmm. who will not abuse children, who will take care of children, even outside the Green Kenya program. You know, so we have a procedure where we follow, and you don't. We we ensure that you don't have crimin, uh, criminal records. Um, that you're a, you're a, a mentor, you're a role model in the community, and you like sports. For example, football. Mm -hmm. That is the is the is the criteria to bring in coaches. All right, we have different uh, we have different sports centers, uh, recreational sports centers for young. For young mm. guys out here, what makes uh, the Green Kenya different? Very good. So, what makes us unique is um, first of all the passion that we have for for this. We believe that we are not only focusing on Kenya, but looking at Africa in general. That is our vision. And um, uh, what makes us unique is that we do this from the core, from our heart. Uh, we want to make lasting change, sustainable change through play, and we believe that this is possible. Mm -hmm. Another thing is that uh, we have a youthful organization and, and people who are committed into the vision, because at the end of the day, is the vision that will make Green Kenya bigger. Um, and yeah, uh, we love what we're doing. We love what we're doing because um, sometimes I, w I, I work with my team and sometimes I'm like, okay, guys, we don't have anything here, but let's go do this. If we stay together, where two or three are gathered, something gonna come up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, a couple of financial lessons that you, you and your team have learned, considering that you started with nothing financially. Mm -hmm. So, what are a couple of financial lessons that you've learned? One is um, <clears throat> you need to ensure that you're looking at your financial uh, books or you have your financials in order. So, for example, how much did you use in your transportation? Um, how much did you use in, in training? And you need to document that very, very good because I remember when you were starting, I was not really focusing on that. Mine was just to go in the field and play and, and leave it at that. But as we moved along, I met people along the way who told me, David, you're doing a good thing, but you're not focusing on ensuring that your financial measure up to what you're doing. Because you're focused on passion. <laughs> passion. Uh, <laughs> I, I realized that when you focus on what you're doing, money will come. Uh, so, but I was not aware. On the business I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, good in mathematics. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm just good in creating programs. So I had to have people who will ensure that our board and, and, and uh, our leaders ensure that David you have to make sure that we have a good plan here when it comes to financials. Mm -hmm. How much money are you bringing in to do this program? I was not focusing on that. So I remember they sat down with me and say, you have to. So we had um, um, a reconciliation uh, and an Excel where I will write everything that we've spent, uh, how much we project uh, for the year and something like that. And now, now it is organized. Thank mm -hmm. God. That's organized. That is organized. I'm, I might not be the one who is organizing it, but through other people who saw the vision, said, I'm going to support you to organize your finances. Mm -hmm. okay, so, so um, just let me, let me go, go yeah, finish sure this. So your, your financial should really go hand in hand with the program that you're doing. Because honestly, if someone is going to support you to do this program, then they look at that side as well. How are, how are you good in managing this? Mm -hmm. And through the years, we've improved. I'm, I'm happy that we've improved. All right. oh, yeah. Fair enough. So what Fair a couple, couple of uh, uh, achievement stories that mm -hmm. you, when you look back and you feel like, I don't regret that I actually embarked on this journey. Wow. Wow. A um, <clears throat> couple of them. So number one, I remember I was chosen uh, to attend the United Nations uh, Office for Sports and Development under 
the auspice of Willie Lemke, who was the special advisor to Ban Ki Moon then. And uh, <coughs> I was chosen to go and represent, you know, our organization uh, in Doha to just, you know, explain and express what we are doing. That was one of the achievement. And then I was also chosen to be part of um, the first Imagine Peace in Greece twice. Uh, first and second imagine peace and through this training I was able to learn you know different things that I would come and implement here at home and then uh, with CSE uh, across the cross continent we've been able to get a chance to you know travel to even to other countries last time I was in Malawi and you know I was able to run a program by myself uh, with the support of uh, they call them global citizens uh, who were able to you know, we met in Nairobi first. We concluded the program in Nairobi, then went to Kisumu, Ambita, and then went to Malawi. Mm -hmm. So it was like a month just traveling from different communities, teaching the same. So I felt like this thing is possible. It is really possible. So through that, and then working with different institutions also, really uh, exposed or gi gave me the, the opportunity to believe. Mine was just the belief, if, because mm -hmm. if this belief can kick in, then I can achieve that, I can achieve what I want. So those are some of the achievements. And when it comes to the organization, um, we're going to celebrate our sixth birthday tomorrow. tomorrow. Uh, so What's the plan? Happy birthday, uh, guys. So I really don't know, because uh, we normally celebrate our birthdays with children oh, yeah. in, in different schools. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I will ask the team. Mm -hmm. I'll ask the team and see what we can do. But we normally celebrate this with children in, in the informal settlement in, in Mukuru, in Shaurimoyo. So that's why we've been doing this uh, celebration. So okay. we'll see if, you know, we'll gather, cut a cake maybe, mm -hmm. and, and just celebrate with the team now. And hopefully, maybe when the schools are back, or next year when we meet with the children, we'll do something. A couple of challenges that you 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 have faced or still mm -hmm. facing uh, during this uh, time of pandemic, and also in the business aspect of it, also. You know, <coughs> every 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 question is like um, is a story by itself. Mm -hmm. I've faced, and we have faced so many challenges as a team that we don't take them personal Let's anymore. Say top three. Top three. Yes. Um, one is uh, you know when you're starting. Uh, to do something like like what you're doing right now, people don't believe in you because you're still young. Like, mm, are you gonna make it, or you're just here for the money? So when you're starting, people don't believe in you, and you have so many challenges. And then number two is the opportunity to go and do these programs in schools. Some teachers don't believe that you, you're able to do what you want to do. And then number three is the the finances now. Finances now comes in because now as you expand, other organization, other organization as well and other schools want this program but you cannot do it to that capacity because you don't have enough um, <coughs> funding or support you need a number of coaches you need uh, equipment you need the training expertise so those are some of the challenges that we've faced but we've you know overcome them that's why we're here today. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And for someone who is uh, watching this, on, uh, on your final remarks pertaining uh, uh, someone who wants to start up a business, they're thinking about the financial aspect of it. How am I going to raise my capital? How am I going to get funds? And your story is something which is unique where you started with nothing. You just mm -hmm. followed your passion and here you are, transforming uh, young people's lives. Like, what would be your advice to, uh, to, to that person? Number one is um, write down what you want the way you want it mm -hmm. because through that once you've committed down you know then start going into action okay. going into action is talk to people talk talk to your parents talk to your family members and don't say there's no money there's, there's, there's money outside here one thing i know is that there is money because there's no money that has left the universe there's money somewhere mm -hmm. you know so what you need to do is just write what you want down mm -hmm. and then number two go into action then number three act as if this thing is going to work mm -hmm. because at times your mouth and what your heart is saying are two different okay. things but once you put them into alignment i can assure you because i'm a living testimony it will come to pass and 
You may not yet see what we, we can do yet. Watch this space. Right. I'm telling you the truth. Okay. Watch it. What's the vision uh, mm -hmm. for Green Kenya? Let's, uh, I don't want to give a specific time frame, like a couple of years down the road. What's the mm -hmm. vision looking like? So one of the, one of the biggest vision right now is <coughs> we want to build a, a seven-a-side turf field where you know, children can come and play there, but also create revenue for that and we will build them in different counties in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And then number two, we want to do sports for social impact in Africa, uh, sports for social impact consultants in Africa, because we want to teach other young people and inspire them with our story. And we can only inspire them if we go near them and show them if we made it, you mm -hmm. can make it. Mm -hmm. And then number three is to create an opportunity for you know, women to learn about, you know, uh, to have an opportunity for everyone to come and learn and become who they can become. Mm -hmm. We've started uh, slowly, but I believe in the next um, three to five years, sport, uh, tough field is maybe next year or next year but one. Uh, consultancy in Africa, I'll give it three years. Mm -hmm. And then women empowerment also two to three years. We have structures, all you need is just to open up and okay. have the, the right mm -hmm. mind, the right people. I don't want to say um, money per se first, I mm. want to have the right mind, the right perception. And the right people to work with. Oh yes. All right. So how can people find you on social media if they want to reach out to you and uh, just keep this conversation going? So we have our Facebook page, uh, we have our Twitter, we have our YouTube, and we have our Instagram. If you write green hyphen Kenya, uh, if you have a green, just write a green hyphen Kenya dot org, we are all there. Follow us, talk to us, and uh, we'll be happy you know, to share with you this dream because if you stop dreaming, then you stop existing. Ooh, I like that. If you stop dreaming, you stop existing. And I like the initiative whereby you're actually transforming lives mm -hmm. uh, at a very tender age and just, you know, <laughs> focusing them, focusing the young minds uh, on matters pertaining life skills and how important that is when it comes to the real life situations. Thank you very much, David Muller, for creating time to be with us. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, that was David Muller from Green Kenya uh, Sports Center, just for young people to just uh, get to learn different life skills, just to apply them in real life situation. At Y254 channel, is where you can find us across all our social media platform at Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out to me on all my social. And I'll be taking a break and we'll be right back to sample uh, some of your comments on the question of the day.